All right, well, some Democrats and their friends in the media now turning to the 25th Amendment as a potential option to get President Trump out of office. Take a look at some of these headlines. One of them reads, when do we reach 25th Amendment territory? Another impeachment won't save us from Trump, but the 25th Amendment might. The amendment says the president can be removed if majority of the cabinet determines that he is unfit. But should we really be talking about this? Well, here to debate, Amy Holmes is a political analyst for Rasmussen Reports, and Jimmu Green was a 2000 a Clinton campaign advisor and, of course, is a Fox News contributor. Good morning, ladies. Thank you for being with us so early. Good, Good morning, morning, Abby. All right. I said that we are just now talking about the 25th Amendment, but, Amy, I've heard mentions from Democrats about the 25th Amendment from the day that the president got into office. It's one thing to hate him and to hate his policies. Right. It's another one to say he's mentally or physically unfit to be president. Well, it's another thing to be delusional. I mean, there's no way that Trump's cabinet is going to be invoking the 25th Amendment to remove him. This is wishful thinking, but I also think it's dangerous thinking. If you remember before the election, we got a lot of lectures from the media and Democrats that the results of November needed to be respected by Donald Trump because they thought that he would lose and they feared that he would keep on fighting. Well, it seems that those same Democrats have never accepted that Donald Trump won the election in November. He didn't win the popular vote, that's true, but he did win the electoral college. College, and 63 million Americans voted for Donald J. Trump to be in the White House. Jimu, and you look at just how this would even happen, the, the revo uh, using the 25th Amendment, you would have to get the cabinet to stand up and say, you know, the president is unfit to serve. I mean, do Democrats really see this happening? Well, I think, Abby, we have to take into account why these stories are being discussed right now. And this is not being driven by Democrats. This is in response to one of Trump's early supporters, Senator Corker, saying that the president is unstable or reports coming out that Republicans are saying that the president is unstable and unraveling. And then when you've got Senator Corker saying that he's leading us into World War III, these are questions that need to be asked. Now, certainly we are not at any stage where the 25th Amendment could be actually invoked. I'm surprised that we also learned that the president himself didn't even know what the 25th Amendment was when his senior advisor, Bannon, told him that this is something that he should be concerned with. And if the president is charged with defending the Constitution, you would want him to understand all that the Constitution entails. But mm. this is coming directly from Republicans who are now saying what, you know, actually yeah. Hillary Clinton said during the election. Well, Jimmy, you mentioned a unfit. Republican and, and at no place do you talk about the 25th Amendment. Amy, I want to get you back in this because you, you mentioned the word dangerous, and this is a dangerous conversation to be having uh, in this country. Is it also dangerous for Democrats to be focusing so much on this when, when they've got races to win? Well, certainly, I mean, it's dangerous for their party that they seem to be off in, you know, uh, la-la land with uh, dreams of the 25th Amendment that are just absurd and are not going to happen. But in the, in the sense of it being dangerous, we have a democracy. We have elections. We also have political disagreements and disputes. Sometimes they're intra-party. Most of the times they're between parties. But we shouldn't be talking about trying to remove the president simply because you disagree with some of the choices he's making, as controversial as they may be. He was elected. Uh, he won on his campaign promises. He is now fulfilling those campaign promises. Mm. Democrats only have themselves to blame that they failed to defeat him. All In right, addition to fulfilling Jamil, his campaign promises, he's also, though, really challenging specific aspects of the Constitution, and, and that's concerning. All right. We use the word concerning. We've also brought up the word dangerous here. Jimmy, I want to get your thoughts on this Missouri state senator who recently, and she's been in trouble for things that have been posted on Facebook in the past, but on Twitter, she recently compared Trump to Hitler. I think we have that tweet. She says, I have a First Amendment right to share my opinion. And if a meme is offensive to people, they should look at the First Amendment again. The original post says, I hope Trump is assassinated. Jammu, how, how, do, how would anyone defend that? I, I think that post was indefensible. I think, though, we have to be intellectually honest with the audience because this is not the first time that a president has come under attacks like that. We, we saw for eight years President Obama come, to, come under similar attacks, and actually from someone like Ted Nugent, who was welcomed into the White House for photos and, and dinner with the president. So this, is, this isn't something that I think conservatives can, can use as a rallying cry, because we've had a long history 
of conservatives doing the same thing. We, we shouldn't have this language whether you're on the left or the right. But Amy, Both should be accountable. Amy, we're talking about an, an elected official. Correct. Ted Nugent is, is not someone that is elected into office. Correct. And, uh, you know, I just heard a bit of deflection here. Let's focus on this elected official who was censured almost unanimously uh, by her uh, state senate for making those remarks. And then now she's comparing Donald Trump to Hitler. This is a woman who not only disrespects the president, which is her right, absolutely, but she's also disrespecting six million Jews who were murdered by Adolf Hitler, hundreds of thousands of allied troops who died in defense of the West uh, and defied, uh, died in defense of the United States of America. So for her to be comparing Donald Trump, who merely is enacting policies that she doesn't like, to a world historic villain with, you know, real blood on his hands, I think is totally out of bounds. Does she have the right to say it? Yes. Does the First Amendment require us to like it? No. We are seeing, though, a know? lot of actions by this president that kind of put him in a lane of being a oh, dictator do you, do in not training. Go down that road of a dictator right, in Hitler. training. I, I, I'm not I focusing on the, the Hitler <laughs> aspect of it. I'm saying that when you have a president who is going after the free press in the way that yeah. dictators have in other countries before you they mean take as over. Okay, okay ladies, we're going to have to leave it. To unfortunately, we're going to have to leave it right there. Always a spirited debate. Jamu, Amy, great to have you with us this morning. Thank you, ladies.